Hello, I'm Renzo Gruber and in this little tutorial I would like to explain how to use the third auto shim here at the 7 Tesla from Scanexus by using the tools that are kindly provided by Christopher Biggins. So usually when you want to start your experiment you're looking at a um, screen from the host like this one. So first of all we need to register a participant so let's do that following the kind of Scanexus um, um, like a common practice, namely that the name is the name of the operator, namely I'm Renzo Huber, so it would be Ren Hoop, and we can add the date if you want. It would be um, July 7th today. I usually just copy that one to the patient ID, and we would have a phantom in there right now. Let's say um, it's um, 35 years old, the weight is 72, and we can select a study, so I would have um, a study prepared, for example, my study, which is somewhere down there. If I find it real quick, I do not find it quick, so let's find it slowly then. There we are, Renzo Huber. We can use anything from the templates over there, and as always with head imaging at the 7 test, let me use head first to find. So we can start exam. And it will ask me uh, to confirm the, the most important parameters, uh, particularly also um, if this participant has been uh, registered already, we can combine them. And you, you probably know these kind of uh, procedures. So now we can um, start our uh, localizer just to get an approximate orientation where our participant is, is lying. And for that, I just drag and drop our localizer into our queue. Um, again, I confirm that this is my participant, even though I did not uh, move the table. So now it, it usually spits out a few warnings, for example, the one that my transmit voltage has been adjusted. Of course it did, because I don't want to do a transmit adjust just for the localizer. So I click it twice, and then maybe the next... Um, no, okay, this was it. Uh, in, in terms of warnings, sometimes there are warnings about peripheral nerve stimulation, as very often. Um, you can just click them OK, because in our common practice at Scanexus, we tell the participant before they go in that they might experience peripheral nerve stimulation. So here we have our three views then, um, our sagittal, coronal, and axial, and we can start to align our functional um, sequence. Here, for example, if I double-click that one, and it asks me if I, for the scan assistant what I want to do, I always want to select manual, specifically when I use weird um, shimming tools, advanced shimming tools for that matter. So never click automatic, weird things happen. Use manual. And then we can um, adjust our little region of interest here that the imaging volume would be the, the yellow one, and we can adjust the, the shim in green accordingly, maybe covering the, the imaging volume, something like that. And as soon as we want to start shimming, we need to kind of prepare a few things, specifically when you want to use the third order shim. And the first thing that we need to prepare is switch it on. And we can do so by using the tools that Chris Wiggins provided, and we can access them by using the shortcut of the keyboard of Control Escape. And this gives you this little Windows XP menu, and there is this collection of scripts, namely the test automations, and as soon as you hover over it, you can select um, any of these prepared scripts, and now I would be interested in this Connexus underscore shim underscore calc underscore info XM. So if I click it, it tells me that the number of channels from the C shim in is zero. And this is how the system should be when you approach it and start your experiment. If this is not a zero, somebody scanning before you screwed up and didn't um, switch it off again. And this is really something that we should avoid. And because um, other people who are not aware of using the third order shim and don't, don't use it actually might end up with a worse second order shim if they're not aware that the third order shim is enabled. So always switch it off after you, um, you're done with your experiment. And I will um, show you again when we are done here with our little tutorial. So um, everything's in order now. Um, I'm starting the experiment and the shim, the number of channels is zero. So now I can um, switch them on again by going to the little Windows XP menu by hitting Control and Escape at the same time. And now I'm not using the 
um, shim calc info, but in fact, I'm using the turn third order shim calc on but. And I, I'm doing that. This executes this little script that Chris Wiggins provided. And it asks me to press any key to continue. So I'm pressing any key and now it should be switched on. If you really want to be sure, you can again go back, hit control escape, go to test optimizations and now um, again get the info. So now the number of channels is not zero anymore. It's now 15. So now we are ready to use the third order shim. Siemens provides these little um, interfaces on how we um, set the third order shims and these interfaces can be accessed again by hitting control escape and right up there you see the third order shim set so this is um, um, the kind of interface how we can set get or clear um, the shims as soon as you want to use the third order shim this little uh, window should always be somewhere like open you should not close it if you close it it will also warn you because as soon as you close it you and the, the shim that are set might not be used properly. So now um, we have this ready and we just park it here on the top left maybe. So now we can start with the shimming procedure and first get a field map. And we do that again with the um, option adjustments. And before we can do a field map, we want to have first a frequency. So um, I hit go and it will start to um, give me a, a frequency spectrum. And we have a peak and it converged. This means that we have a yes over there. So everything is good and we can go to the 3D shim, not to be confused with the third order shim. This is a 3D shim, which gives us the shim currents up to second order. And in order to um, calculate them, we first need to measure them. This takes a bit. It's a, a, a little a gradient echo sequence. And maybe you can hear it right over there. We are particularly interested then in the in the field maps or in the phases of this um, gradient echo sequence, and it will show us the kind of phase maps in this little window here, um, where the phase is selected by default in a kind of um, sagittal view. So here you see that down to the neck we have a lot of inhomogeneities, a lot of phase wraps. In our area of interest, it actually doesn't look so bad already. So we can now calculate the necessary um, um, currents by clicking this button. So now they're in our temp and in order to load them into the system, we click apply. And now it only applied the, the currents for the spherical harmonics up to second order. We also want to apply it now for the third order. And this is where this little window comes in again. And now we click sec, set third order shim. And now these little uh, zero uh, values are now getting finite values that that makes sense. Um, and I usually do this procedure uh, two or three times and with um, iteratively. And with this procedure, I mean, I do the frequency by hit go and then do measurement, calculate, apply, set, always. Go, measurement, calculate, apply, set. This is the kind of circle of the three buttons you need to click. So now I try to measure the frequency and as usual for the first time after you did the field map it did not converge and this is also visible as, as the little n over here usually when that happens you don't need to panic just click uh, go again and usually the second time it converges already so now it converged we have a peak and we have a yes over there so now we can um, continue with our iterations and go to measurement as i said always go measurement calculate apply and set this is the, the circle. So again, we are acquiring a field map right now, as you can hear. This takes a second. Again, we can calculate it now and then apply it and again set it. You can maybe see that the um, currents here did not really change a lot. Um, also here for the um, first and second order currents, you can see maybe it changed from 14 to 12, from 56 to 59, 27 to... F so we basically are already mostly converged. Not perfectly, that's why we did it twice. Um, you can also do it three times if you want. Usually I do it three times, but now um, I won't do it three times. So um, we have 
good gym currents that we're happy with. So now I can close this little uh, manual adjustment window. I do not want to close um, this window over here. I want to minimize it. If I close it, it will warn me and it will not work properly. So I minimize it. If you ever want to get it back, you can get, uh, get it back with the controlled tab key where you can select the, the little window again or, and minimize it if, if it um, um, annoys you. So now um, we have a good um, set of, of shim currents and we can actually start our experiment. If you want to um, use, for example, another sequence with the same shimming, shim currents, you can um, I will, uh, start this here. Uh, let's cancel this one and load in a second run, for example, and prepare that one. So now the second run should um, have the same shimming and the same orientations, for example. So first I copied the center of slice groups, so we might want to have the same orientation of our imaging volume, but now I also want to have the same um, shim current. So what I do is I copy parameter and select adjust volume. Okay, so now the second run will use the same shimming, also including the third order shim, um, as the first run. And let's assume we are done with that and we are, we are happy with our experiments, so we can stop our scan and we can um, close our patient. So now um, everything looks like we can leave the scanner, right? This is not true. We still didn't um, close the third or the shim interface and also we didn't um, turn it off again. So um, we need to do this and we should really not forget this because other people scanning after us uh, will have suboptimal shim currents if we don't uh, switch it off. They will also have suboptimal second order shim currents if we don't switch off the third order shim. So first I can close the little um, GUI from Siemens again with the Alt Tab um, shortcut. And now I can actually close it by hitting this little X over there and I really want to close it, yes. Now, however, we did not switch off the, the, um, the channels, the number of channels that are being used. So again, I'm hitting Control Escape and go back to my test optimizations. And now I want to um, use the very bottom script here, turn third order shim calc off, but. And this is the one, which again is a nice script from Chris Wiggins and um, it's finished by pressing any key and hitting any key. And to be really sure, I again go to my test optimizations and use this Connexus shim calc info XM, which now gives me the zero. This is all good. And only when this is zero, I can leave the scanner. Thank you for watching.